The final broken promise, or until now broken promise, has finally been completed by EA and DICE. Post-launch weapons, you've earned my respect guys. I was probably the hardest one to convince, but over the last few months I've had nothing but good things to say about your game, apart from maybe what's going on with GA, but still I wouldn't count as a bad thing, it's just something I personally want and a lot of other people do as well, but the newest community transmission, it's not going to be a news video, I'm just going to be discussing this because things continue to go in the right direction with Battlefront 2 and that makes me as a player very very happy. I want to give all my opinions on this stuff. Now there's two new infiltrator reinforcements, the first of which being the Ewok, which does sound significantly different. His primary weapon is actually going to be his hunter bow, so a bit different to the axe type stick, whatever it is that he uses in Ewok hunt. And the ISB agent is on the other side with the dual wielding pistols. Now these are the only two new reinforcements for now, but I think this is looking very good for the video I made the other day, talking about the four plus potential new reinforcements, because yes, while they've added some new skins for the Imperial Jump Trooper, and the Wookiee Warrior, who will act as the other reinforcements for this era right now. I think it's very important to remember that we've got nothing in this update or community transmission about capital supremacy for the OT. Now, that's probably going to be coming in March. We knew that Scarif wasn't coming in February, so I would expect Capital Supremacy to be March. And in that, I wouldn't be surprised if the other two reinforcements come along that I've been talking about. Maybe I'll get them wrong, but I do think there'll be two more reinforcements. We're already not getting those Capital ships for this era, so I don't think they're going to lack reinforcements either for the originals, considering it is the most popular era as well. Maybe not gameplay-wise, but in terms of the actual movies themselves, it's the most popular era, so I don't think they would miss out capital ships and only give us two new reinforcements, so I would expect the X-Wing pilot and the Shadow Trooper or whatever they might be to be here next month. The ISB agent is looking incredible as well, she's got that same helmet as Agent Callus and dueling pistols, which as I said in Sunday's video, I didn't think they were going to do that, but that's very interesting and I'm looking forward to using her. Co-op is coming to Yarvin, Death Star, Endor, Hoff, Tatooine, Kessel and Jabba's Palace, so two Tatooine maps in there. No Bespin, which is unfortunate. Kessel gets some variety though, which I'm very happy about. And it's also coming to all four of the capital ships, but here's where things get interesting. The new weapons, one for each class, and they've not rushed it either because each has got three attachments, just like all the current weapons in the game. The 11 d is going to be available for the Assault, the DL-18 for Officer, T-21 for the Heavy, and the Cycler Rifle, which is a star card in Battlefront 1, but that's here for the Specialist. All, like I said, with free attachments, so I'm very pleased with that. Leia's Flash Grenade is being replaced with a Thermal Detonator, of which she will have free of. So once again here, they're changing up all the little different things in the game. They're adding little bits to everything, and in some places quite big bits, and they're really strengthening this game overall now. In a way, it kind of gives me that feeling of our things coming to a close, because they seem to be tying up the loose ends, but I definitely hope not, and don't read too much into that sentence, but I just get that vibe sometimes. H3V is obviously getting those two new capital ships as well, and the Rocket Trooper and the Wookiee, like I said, again, some upgrades and things are looking really cool here. But overall, I do want to touch upon that final promise they've kept to the weapons, and things do feel complete now for me. Obviously Galactic Assault is still a bit of an issue, but I don't think it's going to change things overall. They've done the weapons, they've done the maps. Skins maybe, yeah, uh, some dark side skins are still definitely in need of coming to the game, like ones for Maul, Vader, Boba. The list is endless there, but in terms of what was promised post-launch for this game, the maps have come, which it was really struggling with maps, and we've got that. We've got the heroes, we've got the weapons now. We've had a decent amount of skins as well, reinforcements, which weren't even promised for post-launch, but we've got so many of those in the game now as well, and support for all three eras. Of course, there's little things we can nitpick on here and there, but it's very hard to criticise this game right now, and that's honestly the state I wanted it to come to eventually, where it's hard to criticise, and all I can say is good things about it. Right now, 
every area of this game is looking very, very secure. And minus the bugs, which I feel like there's becoming less and less of, which is another good thing, I do feel like this game is in the best state possible with something for everyone. But that is where I will leave it, guys. Obviously, like I said, not really a news video because I know everybody's going to do those. I just wanted to say how pleased I am with this once again. And this is only the beginning of the Age of Rebellion content. That sequel content does feel a bit rushed, but... Like I said in my previous video as well, I feel like they delivered a lot more of the sequel content in a shorter period of time than when what they did with the prequel content where that was more spaced out. So maybe they've got more people on the team now, who knows? But thank you very much for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all next time.